Welcome back to Medical Monday. We are talking about radiation therapy as part of cancer treatment. I have Dr. James Gray from Tennessee Oncology as my expert here today. Clyde and Lucy, I know you're on the line. Clyde, you've been hanging on the longest. I did it again. Darn it, we're getting used to a new phone system. I'm going to learn one of these days. Clyde, thank you for hanging in there. What is your question? My question is, I'm taking a new medicine. I, I had an operation, and they took a mass out, and they, and they told me I, I, would, I would get on this pill called Gleevec, and what I am currently taking right now. But so far, I, so far I haven't had any of no side effects. Is that going to be side effects down the line with this? Is that something you're familiar with? Yeah, a little bit, uh, but that's not my area of expertise. Uh, this is in the area of my medical oncology col uh, colleagues, but uh, Gleevec is uh, one of the category of a very specific targeted type of chemotherapy, which is usually only used in particular, uh, uh, like a particular tumor called a gastrointestinal stromal tumor, and that may be the mass that he had. Does it remove from your stomach? Yeah. Yeah. So Gleevec is one of our particular um, uh, chemical agents that we have found is very, very particularly targeted toward a type of mutation that only occurs in certain cells that are coming from like that particular type of tumor. So uh, Gleevec is one of those really new interesting drugs that comes into the era or to the discussion of targeted therapy, mm -hmm. which is not my expertise, mm -hmm. but I know a lot about it because a lot of my patients do take it. And it actually has a very low side effect profile. That's one of the advantages of it. Uh, it uh, that's one of the when you're targeting a specific type of mutation in a particular type of antigen on a cell surface you're uh -huh. specifically saying I'm going to do something to that particular tumor wherever it may be but I'm not going to affect the other cells in the body so this targeted therapy approach is, is not just in gastrointestinal uh, uh, stromal tumors or GIST as we call them uh, but in a lot of different tumors and so this is coming in, in, in a major way in treatment of lung cancer and colon cancer and uh, really you, you name it it's, it's a, it's a new development. All right, sounds like pretty good news there, Clyde. Thank you for calling in. Thank you. All right, let's take uh, Lucy. Lucy, thank you for being with us. Uh, no, thank you for taking my call. Happy to do uh, it. What's I your tuned in late, so have you covered anything about ovarian cancer yet? We have not. What's your question? Okay, uh, all my life I've you know wondered about this because I've had members of my family that have had ovarian cancer and whatnot too, and I know how aggressive it is and how hard it is to catch. It's usually caught like when it's stage four and stuff. But here lately, uh, in the past few weeks, they've had some stuff on, on the news about, uh, they are talking about how they're looking at over, uh, ovarian cancer is coming from several different sources where they get uh, cells from the outside, either your cervix or your tubes, or maybe even something on your intestines or endometriosis attach themselves to the ovary and it's kind of like a peat pot or something like a, a fertile bed for it to grow on and by the time they find out that, that you know that it's there it's just by the time it gets to the stage to start growing on the ovary or what not the way I understood it it's 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 out of the control so I want, would like to know if you could explain that a little bit more in, in simpler terms than you know what I understand it and if it still holds true since they they're talking about this is it still more common of quote unquote white women of East European descent than any other race of people? And uh, what do you usually do to treat ovarian cancer? And I'll take your answer offline. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Lucy. Mm -hmm. All right, that was a whole bundle of questions right there. Let's talk ovarian cancer. Okay, well, I'll admit that ovarian cancer is certainly not one of my areas of expertise. Mm -hmm. It comes under the expertise of mostly my gynecologic oncology colleagues. Radiation therapy has in the past been used for ovarian cancer in some settings, but not much. And that's what, me, that's what keeps me out of the loop on that a lot. What she's asking about this cell of origin, most actual most ovarian cancer is actually uh, originates from mutations within the cells within the ovary itself and there can be germ type tumors or more what we call epithelial tumors of the ovaries and it is true what she said that uh, ovarian cancer is unfortunately caught more typically in stage three mm -hmm. or four uh, catching it at stage one or two is much more difficult because there's no easy way to find it at that point it doesn't create symptoms or bleeding or anything else that's noticeable by the patient so they don't they don't have it evaluated uh, it is very genetic 
genetically uh, oriented. So if you have a family history of a lot of uh, ovarian cancer, for example, um, the BRCA1 and BRCA2 mm -hmm. gene analysis can be done for uh, genetic testing or genetic susceptibility. That's something that they can evaluate and look into through their family physician and with an oncologist. Um, and and uh, the typical treatment for ovarian cancer, I believe she asked, is dominantly surgery and chemotherapy. Radiation has been used. I've been involved with it in the past, but it is not one of our mainstays because ovarian cancer so typically is not focused in where I can get a target to aim at. Uh, we've used whole abdominal radiation therapy in the past, but that's been replaced by better chemotherapy regimens now, so I'm not called upon to do that much anymore. Uh, what are some of the other types of cancers that you usually don't treat with radiation? Well, uh, a lot of, the, for example, leukemia, I mentioned earlier, the mm -hmm. only time we don't focus at one part of the body is when the cancer can be everywhere in the body, and that's, for example, leukemia. It, it involves the entire body, in essence. Uh, it's a cancer of the bloodstream, in essence, mm -hmm. and the bone marrow. And so to treat that, sometimes we use radiation as part of a treatment to essentially prepare a patient for a, what most people refer to as a bone marrow transplant. And that's in order to try to uh, supplant the entire body uh, hematopoietic system with a new one that won't actually generate these cancer cells. So uh, that's one of the types of radiation that's not very specific. We do that at my center at Centennial Medical Center. Uh, it's not offered at a lot of different centers um, just because it's a relatively unusual technique and the bone marrow transplants uh, 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 technique is, is limited to very advanced tertiary centers. Uh, uh, let's see, other cancers I don't get involved with treating as much. Uh, most any cancer can be involved. Uh, radiation can be involved. Um, skin cancers we can treat, but so commonly can be dealt with very easily mm -hmm. by a, a dermatologist or a surgeon, removing it very simply yeah. and easily, and it, they're usually caught earlier, so I don't have to treat it. Um, uh, Maybe I, the I, list isn't so long. The, no, the list is not that long where I'm rarely involved. Yeah. Uh, right. Hmm. When we come back, I think we probably have to take another break here pretty quick, but when we come back, I want to talk about these seed implants that okay. you talked about at the beginning of the show. Fascinates me and sure. really a new level of, of treatment, I do believe. So when we come back, we'll talk about that. If you have more questions, feel free to go ahead and give us a call. We'll take those right after the break.